Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Torfin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Quentage, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to go into a little bit more of a competitive deck. Uh, a deck that has been proven to get you to at least 2550 MMR for monsters. Yeah, you got that right. Monsters in particular. Because we're going to be taking a look at um, the Frost deck that was created by one of my Team Elder Blood teammates, namely Timmy. Timmy with an one instead of an I, but uh, let's go and check out the deck list. So it is a Wild Hunt Frost list that has a few additions like the Unseen Elder and Mamuna that round out the entire package, making this a very competitive White Frost monster deck. Um, we'll be going through each and every single card one by one as usual. You can find the entire decklist through the link in the description to the Playgrant website where you can of course import this deck to your own game and try it out. But uh, I'm going to try and explain how you properly play this deck and what your focus should be, what your game plan should be in a minute, especially in the example matches afterwards. If you're not interested in the cards itself, themselves, you can always skip to those example matches immediately using the timeline down at the bottom of your screen right now. So uh, without further ado, let's check out these lovely cards. So first up we have the Wild Hunt Hound, a simple points engine that increases its own power by a one at the end of every one of your turns as long as you have dominance, meaning that you have control over the highest unit on the battlefield. If both of you have the highest unit on the battlefield, like their power is equal, you still have dominance as well. So start the tree power and just can continuously grow along the game. Next up are purify options, the Nagel Fars Taskmaster 4 power for four provisions where you can just purify an enemy unit or if you have dominance you can also purify one of your own units so definitely handy to, to get rid of poisons ruptures stuff like that next up we have the nl conquer a very strong four provision bronze that just starts at seven power with veil so very good at defending against vampires um, if you wouldn't have devotion but this deck of course has uh, it will destroy itself so if you get faced with assimilate they might actually um well make a mistake and try to copy this while they don't have devotion and then it will just destroy itself. Then we have a double Nagel Fars crew. Nagel Fars crew is very very good because it starts at one power and one armor but at the end of your turn if there is frost on the opposite row it boosts itself by one and on deploy you also spawn frost on the opposite turn well on an enemy row you can actually choose this for two turns but it should of course be the opposite row so you get a point when you play it because of our white frost leader ability where wild hunt units gain a point when you play them on the opposite row of a frost afflicted row and of course you will also gain another point by the end of the turn since there is frost on the other side of the row and we have a double wild hunt rider basically a tinning option where uh, for four power and five provisions you deploy this card, if you have dominance, you also summon the copy from the deck to the row. If you use this through Oberon, you could even be very lucky and get a Wild Hunter Rider from that and then just get three of them in one go. But chances of that are rather slim. And we have the Wild Hunt Bruiser, five power and one armor for five provisions. And on the ball, you move an enemy unit to the other row. And if you move it to a row with Frost, you also damage it by two. So possible seven with one armor. But of course, you also move that unit. So if it's a row locked unit, that ability is gone. Then one Incubus. I do find this card interesting now that it has been buffed to six power. So six power for five provisions. And on the ploy, you summon a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard to the opposite row. And then summon a bronze unit of equal or less provisions from your graveyard to the same row. So yeah, this could allow you to get either a Griffin or an NL Conqueror back. So if you get uh, lucky and your opponent has a one power unit in their graveyard, you can get up to 12, 14 points with just this card, which is quite powerful indeed. And then of course, just talked about it, the Griffin. Uh, we won't be playing Griffins directly, ideally. So nine power for five provisions and on deploy, you destroy an allied unit on this row. And um, yeah, so that's basically a sacrifice for that Griffin. But we will be able to get rid of these cards, uh, the Griffins, without playing them uh, through Imblerit mostly, and then of course through Mamuna, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Then one Red Rider is a Wild Hunt special card where you can either spawn Frost on one 
row for four turns or on both enemy rows for two turns. So definitely a good option to fill the board with frost in one go and get of course the uh, queen of the wild hunt out of the deck immediately. Next up is the Apiarian Phantom, four power and one armor with Veil um, that has a very cool passive ability where of course if you don't use the order ability you boost himself by one. So basically a little bit like the uh, Wild Hunt Hound but with a higher base power and a little bit of armor. And also an order ability if he's on the melee row you can also damage an enemy unit by three but once you do that you won't boost himself any further. Then Gals is another tutor card, so two power for eight provisions and on deploy. If you put them on the ranged row, you play a Wild Hunt special card from this deck. Do be careful with this card, you only have three options. So you have the uh, Red Riders that we just saw, you have Imlarit's Wrath, and you have the Nagalfar. So uh, if you've seen all those, all three of those cards, don't play Gals anymore because he will be bricked. Next up, the Winter Queen, so the Queen of the Wild Hunt, four power for eight provisions. On Devotion, you also gain Thrive, so that's exactly what we'll be going for. And at the end of your turn, if there is Frost on both enemy rows, so for example with Red Riders, you summon this unit from your deck to the ranged roll automatically. So basically another thinning option. Then, we talked about it as well, Imlerit's Wrath, you damage an enemy unit by the power of your highest unit. If you control Imlerit, however, you destroy an enemy unit instead. Don't forget about this secondary effect, because I often do. Uh, so if you have Imlerit on the board, you can destroy whatever you want without looking for um, yeah, a very high powered unit on your side of the board. Now we have Imlerit himself, of course, three power for nine provisions and on deploy, if you put him on the melee row, you draw a card and then discard a card. If that discarded card is a unit, you boost himself by the discarded card's power. In most cases, you want to either be discarding an NL Conqueror or, of course, the Griffins. Always go for Griffins if you can, because Griffins just boost Imlerit to 12. 13 if there's Frost on the other row, so very powerful indeed, just to get a bit of momentum going. Then we have the Nagalfar, our final tutor card, so a Wild Hunt special card where you look at the two random, well, you don't look at the two random, you just look at two random gold cards from your deck. You play one and you place the other one on top of your deck, guaranteeing your next draw to be that. If you play Nagalfar before Imlerip, that also means that you know which card you're gonna draw, which could come in handy later on as well, but just a very good tutor card for monsters. Then of course the king of the wild hunt can't be omitted, Eridan Bereak Glass, 6 power for 10 provisions and on deploy you spawn frost on an enemy row for 2 turns and if you have dominance you also increase damage dealt by frost by 1. So not just the frost that you just applied, also any other frost that would be on the board, basically giving this card a 12 point potential. Uh, just from him alone but of course if you have any other frost on the board and you can keep dominance and you can keep this card alive this can go pretty pretty highly. And then the griffins are mainly set up for Mamuna because Mamuna is still a very powerful card. 2 power for 12 provisions has zeal on her order ability which is banish a bronze unit from your graveyard hopefully the griffin and boost self by its power so going up to 11 and then you summon a copy from your deck to this row. Uh, of the card that you just destroyed. So if you have one more griffin in your deck, you had one in the graveyard as well, you can eat the one in the graveyard with Mamuna and then just automatically summon the griffin from the deck as well. Basically giving you, if you go for griffins, 20 points with this single card. You don't want to go for Sabbath with this card because if you uh, have Sabbath, you play that copy instead. And if you play the griffin, you need to destroy another card. So that might not be ideal. So keep that in mind. And now we have Oberon, the um, evolution card of monsters. So Oberon King will be going to Oberon Conqueror since we have Devotion. So five power for 12 provisions has Veil as well if you get to Oberon Conqueror. And on deploy, you create and play a bronze wild hunt unit. Uh, this also works if you um, have um, Oberon Invader, so the second step. You don't want to use Oberon King at all because it just pl it plays a random, uh, completely random, while with the other two options you have the choice between three. And of course the final one also has a passive ability where you boost every Wild Hunt unit you play by one as long as Oberon Conqueror is still alive. So another few points um, available for you to just gather up. 
And then last but not least, we have another engine card, the Unseen Elder 6 power for 12 provisions on deploy. You give four bleeding to an enemy unit, and at the end of your turn, you give bleeding of two turns to a random enemy unit without bleeding. Um, if you have devotion, the bleeding on enemy units is also triggered at the end of your turn, basically speeding up the rate of uh, bleeding ticking down and basically giving you just more points, because that means that the two bleeding that you give to a random enemy unit will be gone by the time it's your turn turn again because it will trigger by it will be triggered by um, the unseen elder by the end of your turn and then your opponent's turn will also end and that second turn of bleeding will also trigger meaning that unseen elder will still have another target to randomly assign if your opponent would not play many units Tactical advantage is used as our stratagem, just a simple 5 point boost that should be going to a wild hunt hound since those are pretty weak to start with, but uh, if you boost them by 5 you gain dominance automatically and make them a lot more beefier to just keep gathering points. And then of course our leader ability is White Frost where you get two charges of the order ability where you move an enemy unit to an other row and spawn frost on that row for two turns. And of course, also whenever you play a wild hunt unit, you boost it by one if there's frost on the opposite row. So keep that in mind when you're playing units as well. So as you might have noticed from all the cards that we've just discussed, there are a lot of caveats with this deck, but if played correctly, this is a powerhouse. So let's show this off in a few example matches. So first up, we have Nilfgaard with Enslave. So that might be a little bit difficult because they of course can take over our engine cards. So we're gonna have to be careful when we play those. Um, we don't start now, so we could get rid of the Wild Hunt Hound, although with a little bit of help from the Nagelfar screw, this might actually work out. Maybe I don't wanna play Red Riders right now. We get the Wild Hunt Riders instead. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the Wild Hunt Bruises and we get Gals, okay. So Gals could actually get the, uh, the Riders down as well. Um, and we get a Fire Scorpion to start with. Okay, so that leaves out Dominance immediately. So let's start with an Agafar Screw and a little bit of Frost to take that down. We don't want to have those high-powered units over there. And then, of course, we get Turney Jousted, which is what was always going to happen. Um, we could go for an Agafar Screw again. Just doubling down on that Frost over there. Don't I think that's such a bad option to start with. And since there's only one unit, I don't really have any other option either way. So as you saw, the Nagafar's crew immediately goes to tree because we put it on a row that has frost. Uh, and then it boosts itself again. So we get another fire scorpion there. And some more hits on the Nagafar's crew. Um, yeah, I'm going to move the fire scorpion to the back. And that's going to have uh, four points of frost. And I think if I now play the Wild Hunt Hound over here, that's going to get dominance because of the extra point it gets from the frost. So now both of those cards are in the frost, and we don't really need to care about the rest of them. I'm just trying to bait out all those assassination cards, and now Nagafar's crew is completely destroyed. Um, but we do have Dominance now, if we play the Wild Hunt Riders, so that gives us the edge here. So even though all of our cards have been destroyed, we're at six, uh, uh, four, nine now, so uh, five points ahead. We get Jan Kalveit. Um, and no further, no further tactics cards for now. The Apiarian Phantom is of course risky, we can get assassinated immediately. Um... We could use Gels to get... what could we get out of here? I don't have a Griffin in hand, do I know? So Imnerit would be useless, so it's really risky to play Gels now. So I'm gonna have to wait. Um, let's put the API in Phantom down then, I know it's probably gonna get destroyed. Um, so instead, I'm actually just gonna destroy one of the Fire Scorpions with that. There we go. Probably the better option, since we know that the API and Phantom will get destroyed otherwise. I could have even put it... No, I couldn't have, because I can't use the order ability if it's not on the melee row. Could have put it on the range row for an extra point, but then, yeah, no uh, order ability for that. It would have been out of assassination range, uh, but of course not out of enslave range here, so that's six uh, enslave six, so we really need to be careful. 
And then one of the Wild Hunt Riders is removed. And we get the classic Calvate and uh, Ardal combo here. I can get round one here. Um, if I play Eridan now. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So Eridan on the uh, back row. And I could use my leader ability again, but I'm not going to. I have the advantage right now. So it's no use uh, blocking that off. Now we get Menno Kuhorn getting another tourney joust out. That's probably going to go on to... Oh. That was smart. So I lose dominance with that. And they took Eridan. Now they can't do Frost, so it's not like Eridan is doing anything over there. But that is going to be enough. That is 16 points ahead. Uh, even though... Well, they will only lose one more point because of the Frost. And I don't have any way of doing uh, getting dominance here. Hmm. I could use another leader ability. And then we get the Winter Queen. Uh, and the Winter Queen is going to be 10 more points, 11, and then the Frost. It could actually work. Um, so let's put Eridan on the other row. So that will trigger the Winter Queen. And then we can use the uh, Wild Hunt Bruiser to get rid of that one Fire Scorpion here. There we go. And there we have the Winter Queen. So that is not enough, actually. So that's Assassination. Um, but I don't actually need to do all that much. If I now put that second Wild Hunt Rally that they forced back into my hand, I get five points from that and then four points from the Frost that's still ticking down. So still ahead. And my final Gambit is uh, Gels. Ooh, Joachim into Lydia. I could still get the Unseen Elder here. But yeah, Lydia is 13 and then another special card on top of that. It's probably, it's only natural selection. That's three points on that for some reason. Nine points. If I get the Unseen Elder, then I do get those nine points. And I think I'm almost guaranteed. No, I'm not. Definitely not. And if I draw Imlerit or Imlerit's Wrath, I actually am bricked. So I think it's a risk I don't want to take. Uh, my hand is good for the next few rounds. So yeah, I'm going to have to risk it. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's pause. I'm not going to push this any further. Probably have a pretty good hand. Um, so if this is the Rodea Shoop version, then well, they have Rodea and Shoop still left. Uh, but Joachim is out of the question, at least. There we get Imrit himself. The Bruiser I most likely won't have any use for anymore. Incubus? Incubus. What's the graveyard of my opponent look like? Oof. Fire Scorpions all the way. Um, so I'm going to get rid of Incubus as well. Because I need a Griffin. There we go. We get a pass, which is fine. Um, yeah, I don't really need to tin anything here, so let's just put the NL Conqueror down and pass ourselves. So with Gels, I can get the final pieces I need. Um, I have the Griffin, so I need to be careful. The only thing that I really need to be careful about now is... Oh, wow. Wait. I don't have any gold cards in my deck anymore, aside from Inmigrant's Rod, so... I don't need this. I'm gonna have to stop here. Because if I get Imlerit's Wrath, then um, I break Gals. Um, and if I get a Griffin, I break Mamuna. So I'm gonna... Oof. Yeah, let's finish redrawing. But this, is, this might actually be tough. Just because of the fact that I'm... Uh, yeah, I don't have the ideal pieces on the board now. But Oberon first. Oberon into an El Conqueror. Um, there we go. Do need to be careful not to have too big of a row here, although I think I will. But I think we can always eat uh, gels of that if we need to with the... Uh... Mm. So they get White Frost now. They also still have Red Riders, I kind of forgot about that. I have Dominance, so the Wild Hunt Hound is probably the better option. Um, just because it's such a nice target to hit. And it goes to 5 immediately. And it's an engine that needs to be removed. And I think Gals into Imrit's Wrath is probably still the better option. 
Um, they can't steal... That also makes me think. They can't steal... Unseen Elder now, I think. So I'm going to play Unseen Elder now, since just because it's such a good engine card. And we get like uh, 12 points out of this immediately. We get Yennefer's Invocation, but... I don't think they have another option to draw cards. I don't think they do. Incubus is probably next, but I need to be... Oh yeah, Mage Assassin is there. And I think I still have an Anel Conqueror here, yeah. So, um... Let's do Incubus on this row. Get the Mage Assassin down on their side and we can get... Ooh, or we can get Wild Hunt Hound. And I'll conquer Wild Hunt Hunt. We still have... No. Probably an Alconquer is better. Just to get a bit more uh, juicy targets for uh, the Frost to hit. That we don't really care about. Ooh, Oberon. Oberon gets uh, into Coup de Grasse range. Okay. Nagelfar screw down there. Fair enough. Um, we can now do Imlerit with um, the griffin and we get okay okay that's fine um, that's fine because we can do red riders now with uh, gals damn um, it's not ideal but I can do I'm still not bricked I can get Imrit's rod with Nagalfar and then uh, red riders with gals and we get more frost on that row we still have dominance and if our opponent wants to get... Ooh, damn. That was harsh. Treason. Um, gals. Gals, gals, gals. Gals now needs to do just four turns of frost on that back row. Um, that's probably going to be the better option here. There we go. We still have dominance, but that's probably not going to take too long anymore. Next up is Mamuna. And then the final card will be Imrit's Ralp. And I can even put Mamuna on the um, the back row, just to let it take the heat. Um, so yeah, it's also the least, well, it doesn't really matter, but both, both rows are equal in points, so we can just do Mamuna onto the Griffin, and we get that Griffin for free. So that's 37.26. We get Bribery now, that could be Eridan, might hurt. Oberon, no, yeah, Eridan. But Eridan does not have dominance at the moment. So I think they can't get dominance. This was the final card that would trigger the frost, so I don't get hit by the frost anymore. And the Nagelfar's crew is going to get ticked down regardless, so I am just going to use him that it's Wrath on Eridan. Yeah. It's probably going to be the better option. We're 11 points ahead, so that's going to be down to the wire here. And that is only 8 points. Um, yeah, 8 points. There we go. Woof! That was close. But we got it in the end with the, the, the power of Mamuna and uh, Eridan. The, well, not Eridan, uh, Imlerit. That was really, really good. And next up, we have Mushrooms. Mushrooms. That is going to be interesting, because Battle Trance, of course, is really good. It takes a lot of heat, but our starting hand isn't looking too shabby either. Um, we have Imlerit, so we definitely need a Griffin. We didn't start this time, um, but it didn't seem like we ever started <laughs> in the matches that I've done so far. So let's get rid of Nagelfar's Taskmaster as well, and we get Gals. Gals is actually almost bricked uh, because the two other Wild Hunt cards are in my hand. Um, but yeah, not the worst starting hand. Could have maybe gotten rid of uh, Incubus instead, because Incubus is not that useful at the moment, but yeah. Most of our golds are in hand, so that is perfectly fine. We can do some tinning with Gels and with um, Nagelfar. Our opponent starts with a Crow Clan Preacher. Um, as always, I'm going to start with the Nagelfar screw just to get that frost going, but... That is a peculiar choice. How? I'm, I'm just confused. I'm, I'm just confused. I'm going to be honest about that. I'm just confused. Um, they are going to use their leader ability as well now. So Nagelfar's crew is going to die because of the hits from Coral. But that gives us a nice juicy double row. And there haven't been any 
Um, there haven't been any alchemy cards, so the Crow Clan Preacher is actually still alive. So I'm gonna use my leader ability to put the Crow Clan Preacher, Crow Clan Preacher, Crow Clan Preacher. It's a hard word. Uh, to the other row, and then use the uh, Bruiser to put that back and kill it. So that's at least one engine out of the way. And we're still happily doing all the frosty things. And now we get the Winter Queen as well. And I can play Gels on top of that for some more frost. So this is looking A-OK. -okay. So we get Burna. Burna's probably going to fill up that row even further. And remember, Battle Trans also heals whenever you... Uh, play another, uh, another alchemy card. I'm gonna put the Apiarian Phantom down first, because I'm not do too hurried about um, adding more frost to the board. Because with this, I have enough points to make this equal. Okay, but we get the benefit here. Um, so, as I said, Gels into Red Riders into frost on both rows. So we get maximum value in the shortest amount of time. There we go. And our uh, our Apiarian Phantom just keeps boosting as well. So now we are ahead. You my tail. Another little Hofru. Boosting herself up to 8. That Hofru can go for rain. Probably the, not the better option, I think. It's better to take the damage. Because the armor of the Apiarian Phantom actually takes the first hit. Um, I could do Nagelfar, but it's probably too... Well, it's not even that risky. It's either Eredin, Oberon, or Mamuna, but I don't want to get Oberon and Mamuna as the option, so it is risky. Um, are there any crappy bronzes? There are, actually, but do I have any bronzes? No, I don't have any bronzes in the graveyard, so that doesn't really help. So, yeah. And I'll conquer it then. Just putting that over here. 8 points because of the fact that there's Frost on the other side of the row, and there we go. We do lose another 2 points now because of the um, rain, but we gain another point back. So I don't think that's 8 points. That is not going to be enough. Although our opponent does have carryover. No, that's not enough because my API and Phantom actually gains a point. So I'm just going to pass. Is this would put us at even. And they don't have any engines on the board. So if they pass now, we're at equal cards. Well, not equal cards. They're a card down and it's 1 1. And we get a Vigal Scorpion, yeah, of course. Don't want to risk that losing that uh, benefit there. But I think that also means they lose the carryover. Because um, Giga Scorpion, Giga Scorpion, every single time, Giga Scorpion decoction is gone, so they can't get rid of my Unseen Aldi that easily. We get a Griffin, and we get another uh, NL Conqueror. I don't need that. And now I'm guaranteed to pull whatever I want with Nagelfar, so I could get Oberon in a pinch if I need to. I don't think there are any bricks here, so that is fine. So let's finish redrawing with that. What are they going to do? Okay, they are going to pass. Then I am definitely just going for Nagelfar's crew. So they lose the carryover as well. I would have probably pushed with that carryover because those six points from the alchemy card and then the benefits you get on top of that with Gelenit would probably have been enough to get me close to the edge here. But now, for all the marbles, um, I don't want that griffin, but it's good that we get it now. We also get a wild hunt rider. So I think the mulligans are pretty obvious. So let's get rid of the griffin. And I can't break Nagelfar anymore because there are two gold cards in our deck. So wild hunt rider can go as well. We get another wild hunt hound. Um, yeah, since we have two of those, I'm going to start with that. And there's no bricks at all anymore, so... Even if I pull any cards with Imlerit, um, it doesn't matter, because the Griffin will already be gone. The only thing that could happen is that I pull another Griffin, um, since I don't have Mamuna. That would be the absolute worst thing to happen. Okay, I'm gonna put Eredin down. 
because Eridan will just take down that Pro Clan creature. I probably won't be able to kill it. Because even if I... I can't isolate it next turn, because the next turn will have those crows. The crows just give a lot of targets. So they resurrect the other Crow Clan Preacher, which will trigger another um, alchemy card going down. Yeah, there we go. And that just pulls that away. And going for Murder Home as well now. Over there. But remember, we also have Imrit's Rod, so it's not as bad as it might seem. Uh, we did lose Dominance. So this card is now officially useless. I could... No, I need to play the Unseen Elder as soon as possible. Um, so let's put that Bleeding down on this one. Because I'm going to just keep that highest one alive. Because I did lose Dominance, so I don't have any extra points from Eridan anymore. There we go. And that kills off some crows as well. So now that our Unseen Elder um, engine is set... I can actually go for the um, the better option, the guarantee here. So if I use Nagelfar now, um, like this, I can get Oberon Conqueror out and put Mamuna up top. So I know that the next card that I draw with Imlirith, it will be Mamuna. So Oberon over here. Wild Hunt Rider would have been nice because I haven't pulled them yet, but we don't have Dominance now, so we won't pull the other Wild Hunt Riders. So the NL Conqueror is the better option here, and I'm also going to put it here, so they have another target for the rain. The Bleeding is still going, which is good. Sadly, it's going on the highest unit on the board. So Bride of the Sea is going to use Giga Scorpion Decoction on... <laughs> okay. Yeah, they kind of missed there. So Murderum went on the Unseen Elder instead of... Um, yeah, they wanted to use the Giga Scorpion Decoction on the Unseen Elder, but they used Murderum by accident by clicking too fast. So that was... Um, yeah, that's what we call a happy accident. Um, so let's put some Frost down now. I'm going to put Frost down on the front row. Just because I can then use Imlerit, which will get double boosted now. Um, and I pull Mamuna automatically with this. There we go, and get rid of the Griffin. That's uh, 14 points, because it gets boosted by the Frost, and it gets boosted by Oberon. And we get Dominance back with that. Oh wow, didn't even realize that. Um, that's another Alchemy card, so we do lose Dominance with that again. And they get another discard with that Resurrection. Huh. I'm almost tempted now to move, but it won't really matter, I think. I could move the Crow Clan Preacher to the front with the Bruiser, which would damage it and give us Dominance back for one more turn. But then the tree damage would go on the, the unit that I want to destroy. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to destroy it later on anyway. Um, yeah, the Wild Hunt Hound is a bit of a waste here. Because it's not going to do anything, so... I'm going to get more alchemy cards, right? I could try, because it would put those two at, ter well, 10 each. So that would mean that we keep Dominance for at least one more turn. Two more turns, actually, unless they have a way of playing two alchemy cards in, in the same turn. But with Imbalit, we have Dominance. So I could put the Wild Hunt Hound down and get at least, uh, that's going to be six points out of that, which is better than nothing. And that was probably the worst thing they could have done. Well, if they wanted to keep Dominance, that is. So I do still get two more points of uh, Wild Hunt Hound here, which is good. Um, so Wild Hunt Hounds. Um, I don't really care. It can actually go here to get them another target for... Uh, for the rain. So there we go, 52-52 against um, this kind of deck is always fun to see. Oof, more Vark. So there goes Dominance, but Imlirit is still alive. If I want to use Imlirit's Wrath, it's about time we do so, and I should probably just do that now. Um, so there we go. Let's not wait too, too much longer now. Because we really needed to uh, take care of one of those crows. I should have done that sooner, by the way. 
Because of course the Crow Clan preachers actually get two points because of the fact that they are bonded. Maxi! Oh, that is not looking good for them. So now we can resurrect something. Um, sadly, it's not going to be that good. Um, it's going to be Dwim Viandro. So let's do this. Put Dwim Viandro on the field. And then I can put um, the NL Conqueror on the field. That's going to be another nine points. So this is going to come down to Mamuna. Um, I am in Sabbath. So that is sad. Oh, that's just Coralty. So that means I think I got this. Yeah, I, got, I definitely, definitely got this. I don't even need to think about this. There we go. Mamuna into a griffin. And the griffin will just eat him. There we go. We got the, the forfeit there. Okay, one more for the roads, and we get Assimilate. Ooh, Assimilate. Which means I can't be as aggressive that... There, my, my voice went. Um, I can't be as aggressive as I usually am. Because, of course, I don't want to give them juicy targets to copy. Uh, so let's get rid of one of the riders. Winter Queen also needs to go, and then... Maybe Lionel Conqueror? Yeah, fine. Apiarian Phantom it is. Okay, so Wild Hunt Rider uh, goes up first. There we go, because I don't have a Wild Hunt Hound, otherwise... Because this is one of the first times we actually start. Uh, I would have gotten a Wild Hunt Hound first. But it uh, doesn't seem like we're that lucky. Okay, next up the Apiarian Phantom. Do not need to make it that big. Um, so I'm just going to do it like this. So that's six points, but can be assassinated because it's in between two riders, which um, seems very fitting. It looks really cool like that. And then we get we get a bar guest, a bar guest of all things. Um, Nagelfar's crew on top of that, so with a little bit of frost, trying to get a little bit of speed into this match because it seems like our opponent is also playing pretty quickly. And we get coup de grace on nothing. What? Say what? That was weird. Um, let's put the, the Conqueror down then. Giving us uh, 8 points. That was a weird flex. Just tossing coup de grace away like that. Fair enough. So you know what we do against people like that. We just push hard into round 2. So we can get rid of all their juicy cards. Um, but of course you need to be careful that I don't give them too many of my juicy cards. Wait, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Wait, what? Why did, did... Did... You all saw that, right? That was a bar guest all of a sudden. That was funny. Um, um, wow, I'm really confused now. Uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, it's not... Well, it's something. Um, yeah, I don't want to pull something else. I have a pretty good hand right now. But I don't want to give them Oberon, um, so I definitely won't play that. But other than that, everything else seems good. Because I don't want to put the, the Winter Queen in my hand either. I'm almost tempted now to just play Imlerith dry on the on the board. <laughs> but let's start with the NL Conqueror. Opponent is deciding. Is that going to be another? Oh, Artorius Vigo. If they can get... Ooh, they didn't get the Duchess Informant that they wanted, I'm assuming. They did get the Mage Assassin, but... Uh, Nothing juicy there. Let's put another Nagelfar screw down with a little bit of frosty fun. And that hits Artorius. If they play another card on that row, like for card, for example. Ah, uh, that's going to go onto Artorius, I'm assuming. Oh, it's not. That You made a big mistake, buddy. Because that Artorius is going down. Um... I'm moving Artorius to the back. There we go. And then I'm going to use Imlerith to draw whatever else. Eridan. Perfect. Perfect draws today. That was very nice. So now that gives us the Winter Queen. Kills Artorius and adds some more damage on the rest of the board. We also have Imlerith now. So whatever's coming next we can actually kill. Oh, that's not juicy enough for me. That's not juicy enough for me. Um, let's put the Bruiser down, which will also trigger the tribe of the Winter Queen. Um, so let's put... Ah, uh, for cards in the back. There we go. 
he can get hit by frost again. We're gonna get Coup de Grass on Joachim again, I'm assuming, but then we can kill whatever comes out of that. Go for it, buddy. Go for it. I urge you. Okay. We got a little bit of spying over there. Um, now we can actually do... I don't have dominance at the moment, just because the fact that the light maker is just above what I can do. Uh, but Aridin is just a better option here. There we go. Also triggers the Winter Queen, gets us some more frost, and now we do have dominance. So they are gonna... Yeah, I actually baited Coup de Grasse out pretty well there. Because um, that is gonna be another 12-point card. I'm gonna kill it with Imrit's Wrath now, but... Um, Okay. I don't know what happened there. It kind of like had a, a tick that happened, but there's no frost on the other side. Um, Emlegit's Rod onto that soldier, I think. I do want to get rid of that, so... Hey, okay. And we still have dominance because of that, meaning that we can also move um, the Mage Torturer to the back, just to be really oppressive here. Because that's going to be 3-3. Three, three. There we go. And then we get Broughton's, so we got Broughton's out, Artorius out. This is looking pretty good. We get a little bit of Frost on our boards, and then we get um, Oberon on top of that, so the leader ability is gone now too. I could push this even further. Um, so this is equal now, they do get 3 points every turn, but I can do that too. And I'm guaranteed to actually do that too. Because they get 3 points and only lose 2. So I definitely need to play a card now. So I can do Gels. Gels into Red Riders. And that can add Frost on both rows. Like this. And we still have Dominance. So that's 3-3 three, three again. And then we get Lydia. So that's also a card that's gone. We get Red Riders as well. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, yeah, it's not going to go any higher than that. Uh, I am going to pass now. Yes, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, what we need to be careful about now is that we don't pull another griffin. That's the only thing that I really need to be careful about. Um, and of course get the Unseen Elder, but we'll get that anyway because of Nagelfar. Oh wow, that actually worked out pretty well. Didn't even notice that. They need to play another card now. Because otherwise this ends at equal points. I completely missed that. Did we still have dominance? Oh, I still have an Agofar screw over there. So we did have dominance. So yeah, that's another card they needed to waste. Okay, but that's good. That I mean, that's really good. It means that we get to stay um, on equal cards. I was already thinking about the fact that we're going down a card. But we get Unseen Elder guaranteed. So the only thing that I really need to be careful about is not get a Griffin. Um, okay, I'm gonna mulligan once, because the Wild Hunt Hound is not that useful now. And we get the Incubus, so that is um, a-okay. So let's finish redrawing on that. We still have a Griffin here, so that, that was a perfect game. That was an absolutely perfect game. Did Oberon get a Spying Tech? I don't know about that. My Oberon has failed, so that doesn't really matter. There's an Illusionist on the board. Um, but Oberon can now do... Oof, I'm almost tempted now to do a Wild Hunt Hound. Because this is going to be one every turn as long as I have Dominance. This is just seven on the ploy and this is six. So it's either this or this. I don't want to make my units too big. So I'm just going to go for the Wild Hunt Hound here. So that's going to be five, five. Sadly, no Frost because I did want to have a little bit of Frost. Okay, they get Oberon now. Yeah. Let's just use Unseen Elder. Do they have another way of getting the top card from their own deck? Probably they do. It's not going to be Joachim, it's going to be something else. But let's put the Unseen Elder over here. And that's going to kill the Nagelfar's crew in one go, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. And then the Incubus can actually get the Nagelfar's crew back. And then we get Arto. Arto is going to be another Oberon. Oh, Indrid. Oh, and that way they draw the next card. That was smart. Okay, that was very well played. That was uh, well played, well played indeed. Now they do have Dominance. 
So I think it's high time that I use my own fancy combo. So let's put Mamuna down and get the Griffin out of the way. So there we go. It is Oberon King. So Oberon King plays for about 10 on average. Um, and it is 10. Um, now we can do Incubus. But I'm not going to do Incubus. I'm going to do Wild Hunt Bruiser first. And just, yeah, it doesn't really matter what I do here. Um, there's no frost on the board. We can just keep bleeding units. So I think I got this. We're 10 points ahead and we still have another card. Experimental Remedy getting a Duchess Informant on the Griffin. Well, it does get them dominance, but there we go. Yeah, they already lost. That was a nice match. That was basically the perfect way to play this deck. It was the perfect hand. We barely had any cards left. I think we had three cards left in the deck. Um, so that's how that is played. So one more look at the deck list of this uh, Timmy Frost deck, as I dubbed it. Uh, I don't think he minds. Um, but yeah, there we go. The deck created by Timmy from Team Elderblood that uh, has pushed him quite highly in his MMR for uh, monsters. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this because I think most of the matches here just displayed very well how you play this deck. You just need to be really careful about which cards you still have left because this deck basically plays for to the very last card in your deck. Uh, there's very few cards that you won't play. Uh, so just keep an eye on that and you will be able to play every single card in this deck. And that's it for this episode. Thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentage. If you think you can improve this deck even further, let us know in the comment section down below because that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. Um, but the game plan basically still remains the same. Win round one, push round two, and then uh, either you win in round two already or you just uh, go big with the Mamuna in the final round. So uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentage being a bit more competitive than usual. And uh, I'll like to see you in the next one, uh, which I don't yet know what we'll bring. So uh, yes, we'll see what that is going to be. It's going to be a surprise for you and for me. So thank you guys enormously for watching and see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye and stay nutty.